As we begin today, I'm in Acts 17. We're going to talk about an unknown God. And in Acts 17, 22, Paul said, Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, You men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. Or another term for that is very religious. For I passed by and beheld your devotions. I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom you ignorantly worship. Him I declare unto you. God that made the world and all things are in seeing that he is Lord in heaven and earth, dwells not in temples made with hands. Neither is he worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he gives to all life and breath and all things. Neither is he worshipped with any man's hands. I kind of find that funny because the Bible talks about they that worship must worship in spirit and truth. And yet most of what I, people call worship is waving at the ceiling. I mean, that might work for a season, but. Eventually, you grow up and realize that worshiping God is in spirit and truth. It's a way of life. But I kind of chuckled at that. I declare unto you the unknown God today. And I do that in, from the angle of Matthew 11:32, And I'm going to read this for you. No man, and do know this. Well, verse 27, let me start there. All things are delivered at Matthew 11, 36, 27. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knows the Son but the Father. Neither knows any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. So God is unknown. The Bible says, let God be true, man the liar. God is unknown to mankind. He's unknown to the carnal man, the carnal the natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit. So it has to be revealed to them personally. Now, many people talk about God. We have many, Paul referred to superstitious. I refer to as religious people out there that know about God, but they don't know God personally because they don't know the Son. This is what Paul came to preach. Many times he would go into the temples, uh, X. 18, 5 and 28, he would go in there and, and show them that Jesus was Christ. Why is that important? Because if you don't know who the Son is, you won't know the Father. John 5, 23 and 24. And if you don't honor the Son, you can't honor the Father. If you don't honor the Father, you can't honor the Son. That's why to many today, it's still an unknown God. I watch Washington every year, and they place a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier. Well, <laughs> there's a lot of times I watch Christians placing a tomb on the unknown a wreath on the on the unknown God. They don't know who he is. And he's dead in their realm. He's dead. They're dead to him. They don't know who he is. It has to be revealed to them by the Father. Let's go to Acts two thirty. And Acts 2.30 begins with, on the next page, Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spoke of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither did his flesh see corruption. Now, David prophesied of this. And this is what they're Paul's quote, or this is what they're quoting in Acts. This Jesus has God raised up whereof we are all witnesses. This Jesus. Kind of the theme for today, this Jesus. Because Jesus, well, he's a simple man, yet misunderstood. He was a man. Bible says God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Well, you had the same thing happen to you when you were born again, but didn't make you God. Bible, and I've looked and looked and looked, and it says, this Jesus has God raised up. Well, it said God raised up Jesus. It didn't say God raised himself up. God is unknown to many today because they try to claim that Jesus was God. <laughs> no, no, no. 
he took a man, anointed him with the Holy Ghost and with power. He, the Spirit of Christ. He was the first born again man. Jesus was no different than you and I, except he was conceived of the Holy Ghost. He had to have a pure bloodline in order to present a perfect sacrifice and live a life without sin. The first man, Adam, was also born of a pure bloodline. The last man, Adam, was also born of a pure bloodline, but he lived a life without sin. Because the Bible says if any man has not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. You have to have the Spirit of Christ within you to live a life that is pleasing to God, to be able to walk in the Spirit, and to know who God is, and then he knows who you are. I think of Matthew 7, 21 through 23. It gets quoted many times. Well, haven't we prophesied in your name and done all these works in your name? In your name. Three times. Three times there's a question mark because they didn't know his name. They didn't know the complete name that makes him Jesus Christ. Oh, the matchless name of Jesus. No, I can think of a name that's much higher than that. At the name of Jesus, yeah, I bow. I acknowledge what this man allowed the Spirit of Christ to do through him. But every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. 1 Timothy 2.4 talks about who would have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. A lot of people get saved and then they just kind of drift off go through life, I'm, it's good, I'm blessed. They don't continue to seek the truth. There's more. The truth will set you free. Paul talked about dying daily. Why? Because it's like the Old Testament sacrifice. When they killed the sacrifice, the spirit was released. Well, the same premise holds true with the Christian. When you kill an area of the flesh that's had dominion, that's had an influence, it releases the spirit to take over. It shows you the truth that sets you free. So you will not know who God is unless his son has revealed to you. What was revealed to Peter in Matthew 16, 13? Well, who do men say that I am? Well, it's the same thing you hear many superstitious religious people talk about with well, Jesus, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Jesus says, Jesus was God. Jesus, Jesus wasn't God. God. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. So he tells you right there, Jesus many times was referred to as the son of man. He's no different than you and I in, this, in the sense that he took the spirit of Christ from conception and ran with it and never limited God. He didn't have the old, he had, an, uh, he had a lower old fallen nature that he had overcome. For many of us, we lived for a period of time in the flesh and built up some bad habits and had to undo that. He did not allow that to happen. Thus, the reason why he presented a sacrifice, a perfect sacrifice that God accepted. Let's go to Acts 17. We're in Acts. Let's just stick, stay around Acts here a little bit. Acts 17. And Paul, as his manner was, uh, and I'm in verse 2. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them three Sabbath days, reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Remember John 5, 39 talks about search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, but they are they which testify of me. Who's me he's talking about? Christ. Christ. Opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. Please take note of that. This Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. He's not God. It's that he's Christ. He's made that same Jesus both Lord and Christ. Now, when you continue, and we just quoted a verse in 1 Timothy 2.4. In 1 Timothy 2.5, it says there's one mediator between God and man, that man Christ Jesus. It doesn't, you know, <laughs> there's one meter between God and man. There was a commercial here a while ago where a guy was running his own business, and he'd answer the phone, hello, I'm, yeah, okay, let me put you in charge with that department. And he'd put him on hold, and he'd run over to another phone, pick it up, hi. Well, if Jesus was God, then he'd, you know, okay, I'm the mediator. Hang on, hold. I'll run over and talk to myself over here. And, come on, folks. How idiotic and stupid. Rightly dividing the word. But it has to be revealed through the Spirit. 
Ephesians 3 5 talks about God's holy and pro holy apostles and prophets and how the this revelation of Christ is revealed to his holy apostles and prophets that's what acknowledges you as one of his then you are able to know who this unknown God is because he is unknown the natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit it has to be revealed by the Spirit so this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ Jesus Christ he's your Lord he's your Savior he's your mediator between you and God he but nowhere no how under no circumstances does it say that this Jesus was God we can go over to Acts 18 verse 5 or verse 4 and he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath persuaded the Jews and Greeks and when Silas and Timothy were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said, Your blood be upon your own hands. heads. I am clean. From henceforth, I will go to the Gentiles. So he got the memo that the Lord tried to send to Peter at one time when he had that vision on the rooftop. To preach to the Gentiles. Well, that's why Paul wrote so much of the New Testament because he got the memo and he went and preached to the Gentiles. He opened up a whole new realm for him to work in, and God gave him an opportunity to do that. And you can go to verse 28 again, and he mightily convinced the Jews and publicly showing through the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. This Jesus. Who is this Jesus? The Jesus Christ. Let's go to 1 John 2. I asked this question many times, and I'll ask it again. Why is it Antichrist? Why is it Antichrist? Why is it Antichrist? It's not Anti-Jesus, not Anti-God. It's Antichrist. If you don't know the name of Christ, if you don't know the doctrine of Christ, you won't know God. He will be unknown to you just as he was to these people in Acts. Uh, verse 18, little children, it is the last time. And as you've heard that Antichrist shall come, and even now there are many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For had they been of us, they no doubt would have continued with us that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But you have an unction of the Holy One, and you know all things. You have an unction. You have an anointing. So you can know the things of God, that he can reveal himself to you. So God is not unknown, that you know. Unto you is given to know the mystery. You want to know what the Bible says. These are things are given. Unto you is given to know. Mark 4.11, unto you is given to know the mystery of the kingdom. It's given to know. It's a free gift. You want to know this. When you don't know it, and that's why it's Antichrist. They acknowledge the Father, and they acknowledge Jesus of Nazareth. But in the middle, someone's missing. Christ, the Son of the living God. Isn't that what Peter, Peter had revealed to him? By who? By his Father in heaven. So continuing in 1 John 2.21, I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. No lie is of the truth. So there's no gray area. There's no shadow of turning. You, you don't make a statement that Jesus was God when the Bible tells you who this Jesus really is. Who's a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ? He's the Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. Whosoever denies the Son, the same has not the Father. He that acknowledges the Son has his Father also. It's a package deal. So that's the truth. And there's no lie in that truth that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. You can read John, and it's interesting, back in John 17, the Lord's Prayer before he left. And read the whole chapter of John uh, 17. But just to give you a brief synopsis here, he talks about, in verse 1, These words spoke Jesus, lift up his eyes to heaven, and said, Father, the hours come, glorify thy Son, that thy Son may also glorify thee, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Jesus Christ was sent from God to, to pay the price, to pay the sacrifice, to show us what it's like to live a life 
without sin, the firstborn, the firstborn again man, which you can do as well. You have that ability to live a life now free from, yeah, I know we still have an old, old nature, but the Lord is dealing with you where you're at today. And the things, there's things that he hasn't told you are sin yet. So don't try to be perfect. And let's finish here. 2 John 7, for many deceivers, second book of John, verse 7, and this is why we preach the doctrine of Christ. For many deceivers are entered the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and antichrist. My profession of faith is Jesus Christ. I have the spirit of Christ. I use the name of Christ to pray. I pray in, my father, in, in the name of Christ, Jesus Christ. I am complete in him because I used a complete name, which makes me complete. You know, there's many Jesuses out there in the world, but there's only one Jesus Christ. That's the name which is above all names. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever in transgresses and abides not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. He that abides in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. So there you know who God is. He's not unknown to you. Wow. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, and receive him not into your house, neither beat him Godspeed. For he that bids him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. God should not be unknown to his people. So church, let him be known. Ask him to show you who Christ is and the revelation of that mystery. Use the name of Jesus Christ in your prayers. I would never pray a prayer without the full name of Jesus Christ. Jesus I know and Paul I know the devil told uh, the sons of Sceva, but who are you? Well, I'm coming to God in the name of Jesus Christ, his son. That gets me access to the throne. God bless church and let God be true and man the liar. <laughs>